Hey everybody, welcome back to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. I'm Sam and I'm joined by my colleagues Ed, Chico, Ray, and Bill on the end there. And we have a really special guest with us for this segment. Uh, Miyamoto-san has joined us to talk to us a little bit about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, earlier on today, uh, Anuma-san stopped by and was talking to us about the different ways that this game kind of steps away from what people might think about as the traditional Zelda conventions. But what we'd love to talk about with you, Miyamoto-san, is how we're actually getting back to the roots of the original Legend of Zelda game here. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Uh, we have them right on screen here now uh, in that original illustration uh, here in the world of Breath of the Wild. It's really interesting how that captures the, the sense of excitement, not only looking over this cliff, but also when you're on the edge of the plateau and you're just kind of looking at all this space that you really want to get to and explore. And of course, as Miyamoto-san said, the, the NES game starts with an old man who gives you a sword. You, you start off in a field and you walk into a cave to get the sword. In this game, you start in a cave and you walk out into a field. So it's almost like it's reversed. <laughs> so I wonder, Miyamoto-san, uh, you mentioned the fact that it was a very conscious choice to not give the player a lot in the way of instruction or tutorial at the beginning of the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, was it a similar reason that you didn't give a lot of story information at the beginning and you kind of dropped the player into this world without telling them anything about what's going on around them? フィールドヒーローになっていくっていうお話に出てきたので非常に前半の語りが少なくて one of, one of the other things that I loved about the NES Zelda game was every time you walked into a new, well, you started the game and you could just go off in any direction, which we see Chico doing here, heading off uh, in, a, in a different direction from where we, I started from earlier in the game. Um, but the other thing is that on every screen there was movement. Um, every time you entered a new screen, there were enemies on the screen and they were milling about or shooting arrows or if they were Octoroks, shooting rocks. And you have that same sense here, but in this case, the movement is coming from the natural world. With the wild animals like the boars, you see the, the leaves kind of floating through the air, um, and you'll notice things like squirrels and lizards running around on the ground. <laughs> もう、ものすごく自然だって。ハンパの数すごい多いですし。で、これあの昔からあの、我々8ビットのね、こう平面のスクリーンを使いながらゲームを作ってきたけど、足音がそれらしく聞こえるようにいろんな足音をつけたり
、あの本当に現場がどんどん今、一緒に作ってきた青沼さんとか藤林さんとかディレクターたちと、それからあプログラマーとかデザイナーがみんなでこれを作ってくれてる。So, you know, I think my position will end up being executive producer on this title as well. But、um, I have been in the past. But in past Zelda titles, I took on a lot of different roles as well. You know,、um, even though I was the executive producer, I did a lot of things that maybe a director would have. But this time around, I, my involvement is really focused on just making sure that Link's movement is natural and his interaction with the environment,、uh, in, with nature, is natural and that、uh, it's, it's all a smooth experience. And really, all the details,、um, I've left it really up to、uh, Mr. Aonuma the,、uh, and、um, Mr. Fujibayashi. And、uh, of course, all the designers and programmers. You know, this is a really、uh, collaborative effort on everyone's behalf. And then I also、um, look after the financials, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually curious,、um, you mentioned when Chico was fighting the problem with the axe there, that your approach would have been probably to shoot from a distance.、Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how your approach has been as you play this game? <laughs> Before, before you jump into that, I just、Ooh. have to point out how much this reminds me of the original meat item <laughs> in the original <laughs> NES Zelda game. It's gotten so big. I was talking about the Ganon to go to the Ganon, but I was talking about the Ganon. I was talking about the Ganon. I was t a l k i n あの敵ともどの武器を使ってもいいし敵の武器を奪って使ってもいいし本当に自分の武器が壊れてそうせざるを得ない時もあるぐらいあのいろんな戦い方があります。You know,、uh, before this、uh, stream started, we were kind of joking about you can you can probably take on、uh, Ganon with just just as he is in the noon, and you really can do that. That's how much freedom this game offers. So you can use all different kinds of weapons for all different kinds of enemies. You can take their weapons and use them against them. So it really does open up to any kind of gameplay style that you prefer. It also opens up a lot of different possibilities in terms of how you want to approach things like combat or puzzle solving. Um, you know, in, in certainly the more recent 3D Zelda games, generally when you've found yourself faced with a puzzle, there's one solution. Whereas in this game,、uh, even as we've been playing in the treehouse, we've found that different people have very different approaches in terms of how they want to try to solve puzzles.、Um, and I think、uh, Chico is, is taking a slightly different approach here to、uh, how she wants to deal with、uh, some combat. Actually, now we're here.、Um, the wind is very strong, so the wind is very strong. Like you see here, the wind is going towards the、uh, enemy, so you just use the fire to take it、uh, back to where the enemy is. Great to talk a little bit about how the fire played an interesting role in the original Legend of Zelda as well. That's right. This is,、uh, I think, the first time in a while that Link is able to use really fire as a, a weapon in a lot of different ways. In the, the original NES Zelda game, you could burn bushes and find things there. And、I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of all of you probably spent a lot of time <laughs> burning every bush in the game. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Bill. <laughs> Bill loves burning things. Baku da mosu. He loves bombs too. <laughs> That's right. So I think、uh, maybe what we're going to do here is、uh, switch to a slightly、uh, different save data, and、um, we're going to look at a slightly different area of the plateau here. I'm curious,、um, Mimaru-san, as we're moving on to another section of the game,、uh, it must be a really interesting experience having been involved in a series for, for this long and over this many iterations.、Um, have you found that there are things that you wished you could have had in the original Legend of Zelda game that you've been able to realize over the course of the series? I'm a mother, you don't know that Zelda is a little bit of 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 a little bit いやしあの現場のメンバープログラマー特にプログラマーとデザイナーたちがこう自然をそのまま自然として作り直そうというところにすごいチャレンジをしてて僕は、まあ、あのこのネタがこうなるというよりそれ全体が理想的だなと思ってただけなんですねだからこの部分のアイデアをこうして作ってくれと言ったことはなくて現場がどんどんものを作っていくっていう。You know, the programmers and the designers, instead of kind of trying to make、uh, one, sort, one spec or one、uh, feature available, they try to really recreate nature as is within the game. And within that step, there's a lot of、um, things that came up 
And so there wasn't anything that I uh, specifically requested. It all came uh, from the development, uh, or excuse me, the uh, programmers and the designers. で、so now as we're trying to create this massive world, we noticed that um, as we're, uh, during that step, we realized a lot of those small, minute details are being polished as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing the game, you, you know, there's all these details and uh, things that you just kind of notice and uh, stumble upon. For example, like, uh, you know, when you look at uh, pieces of rock or stone, some of them, you kind of know that you can't move, and some of them look suspiciously, suspiciously uh, movable, and you just kind of have this feeling. I just don't have anything. Near me for oh wait there's that. one <laughs> I mean it definitely is such a, a rich maybe not immersive experience no, it feels good. so good Bill Bill bringing up the the chunk of meat looking like the the end, one from the NES reminded me of you know that was one of my first great video game moments as a kid was going into that cave scene grumble grumble and being like oh okay here's a puzzle this is something to figure out and then remembering because i had had the manual memorized at that point because that was all the literature we had back then um i was like oh i bet you he's hungry oh that's there's meat there it's just like da -da -da -da. like my, my first little light bulb going off I, like, I still remember that moment very clearly ah. Yeah, and this was an example here again of you know in the, the original NES Zelda game. Sometimes there were there were those conspicuous plot spots where you you knew you could place a bomb. In that game, sometimes you had to tap the wall to see if the the sound was different. Um, but uh, here in in Breath of the Wild. Um, it's really interesting because they've done such a very good job, as Miyamoto was pointing out, of how the, the, the walls are designed in a way that they give you a little bit of a hint that maybe you can blow it up. But there have also been plenty of times where I've had to experiment and see if it, if it actually can happen. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of a feet gut feeling you have when you look at it. So I'm curious, on Miyamoto, have you been surprised as you watch members of the dev team play this game, seeing the different approaches they take, or maybe them playing the game in ways that other members of the team didn't really expect? あの、開発現場を見てきたあの、宮本さんの中で、まあ、あの、開発者がこれをプレイしていろんなプレイの仕方があるんですけど、こういったプレイの面白かったとか、あの、他の人はこういったプレイをしないだろうなっていうプレイ
、今聞こえました。<笑>そうですね、あの。昔ね、ゼルダを、最初のゼルダを作ってるときに、えっと。子供の頃、ボーイスカウトでね、あの。いろんなハイクをしたり、それからオリエンテーリングをしたり。で、それで山の上に登って、その山の上にすごい湖が伸び。すごい感動したことを思い出したんですね。だからその子の思い出でゼルダを作ったりゼルダを遊んでて思い出したっていう。で、そのシーンが今度はもうさらに拡大されて、えー、っと山に実際自分が行ってあるところから、えー、あそこまでにしましょう。<笑><笑> so you know when I was a child, I was in the Boy Scout and I used to go do、um, hiking and orienteering, and there was a time when I was climbing the mountain and it opened, cleared up into this beautiful lake. And when I saw、uh, a scene similar to that original Zelda, it brought me back to that. And now looking at this Zelda, it's, it's, it's even more grander than it was before. But, you know, the route of 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 the route. You know, and、uh, when you're mountain,、uh, climbing a mountain, you have a destination, but then something strikes your interest, so you kind of go off the,、uh, the path.、Mm. And then, you know, there's a lot of interesting things out there, but then you, st- I know, you start to wonder wait, when am I supposed to go back? Am I going to be able to go back? But then that kind of feeling is, is recreated here. And what's great about this game is it,、uh, within a、uh, short period of time, you're able to really、um, explore a lot, and there's a lot to explore in this. And that's one of the things that I love about the game is that just like the original NES Zelda game, it's, it's very easy to kind of wander off your path or get lost in the world and find yourself in an area where the enemies are way beyond your skill level.、Right. <laughs> and then you've got to decide if you want to try to fight it out or if you want to、uh, try to turn around and run back. うちわで青いで、そう、いや、ちょっとコロブのうちわで、国を進めてますけどね。そう、あ、チコさん、ウェイビングファン、ノーパークファンと、あ、ムーフォード、ラップ、here。あの、こういう、あれ、今度進む、自分で進める、引っかかってる。引っかかってますね。自分で進めるイカだっていうのはね、これ今、物理と計算で、引っかかってしまってるんですけども、あの。8ビットの頃からこう、いかだに乗ったらスッと進むとか、内輪で煽るとかいうネタはいろいろあるんですけども、今回、そういう漫画のようなこと、嘘のようなこと、漫画のようなことを全部本物の物理でやると、すごい新しい<笑>魅力があるんですね、こんなこと起こるわけないんですけど、嘘のような本当をやる。You know, like when Chico is stuck there, it's it's because of the physics engine of this game.、Mm. But then, you know, obviously you can't actually、uh, swing a fan and propel yourself on a raft. And these are all kind of、um, comic book-like effects. But taking that and putting,、uh, applying that into a、um, physics engine creates this whole new experience. It's very fun to watch. Of course, in the original NES Zelda game, Link somehow had a raft that he carried around with him.、Um, but in this case, you'll have to find the raft in the lake and ride it across. So, this man. You know, you might find the raft and you realize, oh no, I don't have a fan, so you gotta go back and go grab it. I'm hoping to maybe working on this game, just given the members of the development team, and maybe a budding interest in hiking and maybe joining you on a trip. I think like a dip team field trip itself would be amazing once everybody's had a chance to play this game. Some team building. Team building. But, you know, the team of hiking and hiking and rafting and hiking and hiking and hiking and hiking and hiking. Yeah, Maybe hide copies of the game and they have to go hunt them out on the mountain. Oh, it's a tough end. Oh, she goes on. Shake it off, she goes, shake it off. I have a cold thing. I couldn't touch. Boko, I ああ。Absolutely. It may surprise you, but I'm somewhat of a reckless player. We've seen that. We all know. He goes chopping up some firewood here. I don't know if I have to play, though. 
This is actually one of the other things that I love about the game is that, you know, certainly in the, the original 8-bit Zelda game, the team did an amazing job of using the limited color palettes mm -hmm. and the, the limited graphics of the time to depict a very fully realized world with a lot of different terrain. And, and we see that again here in Breath of the Wild, but to, to an exponential degree. Mm -hmm. And you see it just in the, the style of trees that we've seen so far uh, with the, the forest down below to the fir trees up here in the mountains. It's really impressive. So if you go to the forest, it really does look like a forest. You can think, uh, get things like uh, mushrooms from the forest. It goes without saying, but it, it really is. This game is so beautiful. It, it looks so good. Yeah, I'm against the current, so I can't go. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, you notice, since we were talking about the fact that you've been really involved in uh, making sure that all the animations and the movement feels really good, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the temperature system and your thoughts on that, because that's really interesting as far as how it affects Link as he's traveling through the world. あの、あの、リンクが自然に動けるっていうのを感じさせてたんでおっしゃってたんですが、あの、温度に関しても、どのように you know, so um, this is actually an idea that came up just entirely from the directors and the development mm -hmm. team. Um, so as, for example, as you're climbing a mountain, the taller you go, the higher you go, the colder it gets. Mm -hmm. So you have to prepare yourself by eating food that gives you um, cold resistance. And uh, this game has a plethora of different um, uh, clothes that you can wear. Mm -hmm. And so that helps you prepare for um, any kind of uh, environment that you're going towards. And then so there's a there's a um, element of preparing yourself by uh, having the right clothes, and there's also an element of preparing yourself by eating the right food. I feel like this probably all harkens back to your Boy Scout days some way, yet again. From <laughs> the Boy Scout today, you know, yes. Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> yes, always be. So I know the animation when Link's cold and you look at him and he just feels so Oh, guilty. when he's shivering, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just torturing him Teeth by chattering. taking his clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So don't take your clothes off here. Sure. <laughs> I think people like that. Playing with it and they noticed if, if he wasn't wearing boots and he's cold, you actually see his toes get red and he's shivering and you're so nice. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mr. Miyamoto, was there uh, anything else you wanted to add in terms of the stories of the development of the NES game or, or anything related to this game? そうですね。あの、色々現場とやり取りをして結構ね、僕はあの今度ね、食べ物の材料の種類とかすごい多いんですね。で、あのアイテムの数もすごい多いんです。で、それをこうこの組み合わせ、この組み合わせていろんな組
Um, and I uh, hope you enjoy uh, maybe taking a walk through the booth if you haven't already known we've got everything up and running. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, thanks for joining us. Uh, folks are watching, please don't go anywhere. In a few minutes, we'll come back and take you into another of the shrines that you can check out on the plateau. So please stay tuned. Stick around.